Hey guys, Aaron here with another Popper deck tech for you. This is going to be my green white uh, auras deck tech, also known as green white enchantments, green white hexproof, uh, bogles. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things it's known known by, but it's basically just a deck where you play hexproof creatures and then pump them up to ridiculous levels with uh, auras. And uh, because they're hexproof, they can't blow you out by x by x for wanting you with a removal spell. And so you just swing in with uh, this crazy, ridiculous monster that you've built, and it's a really fun deck to play. So let's just go one by one with the cards here. Uh, starting out with the Hexproof Creatures, we have Glade Cover Scout and Slippery Bogle. These are functionally the exact same cards. They're just one mana. Um, in this case, it's always going to be green. Uh, there's one mana guys that you play on turn one that have Hexproof, so you can get them out really early and just start going to work right away. And they're exactly where this deck wants to be. Uh, and then we have three Silhana Ledge Walker. So the thing, the reason why this card is here is because eight Hexproof Creatures is good, but it's just not quite the consistency you need to get one out every single game. Um, there have been a good amount of cases where usually nine out of 10, eight, nine times out of 10, I would be able to get one out with just the Scout and the Bogle. There's always that couple of games where I just had all this good stuff in my hand, but I just needed a creature and I wasn't getting it. So adding in a few of these really helps out uh, the deck's consistency a lot. And it is more expensive, but it also sort of has flying in that it can't be blocked except by flying creatures. So it's one more mana for a hexproof guy with a benefit. And that's definitely good enough to make the cut as a three of to really round out um, the uh, the hexproof creatures. Uh, having 11, uh, I don't think I've had a single game where I haven't had a creature, uh, which this deck absolutely needs to win. So those are the hexproof creatures. Then we just have four other ones. We have Ara Narlid. Um, this card gets cited out a good amount of the time because it's pretty situational it's also, and it's also fairly slow. And it takes away focus from buffing up your other guys, but in certain situations uh he's pretty much just a game winner um because as you notice um he gets plus one plus one for each aura on the battlefield that's not just ones i control that's ones they control as well so especially if i'm going up against the mirror matchup um and they're not running him or they don't have him out on the field um there pretty much is no way that they're going to be able to chances are there's they're going to have a really hard time dealing with him because um he's going to be getting all the benefits from my auras as well as theirs, and they're not going to be able to block him. Um, so he's good. He wins, He's won me a good amount of games, uh, but like I said, uh, he's slow in certain situations. So he gets sighted out, I want to say maybe a third to a half of the time, but uh, he's good enough in the matches that he's good in to justify a couple spots in the main board. Then we have Heliod's Pilgrim, which is a really important piece for the deck because... See, when it enters the battlefield, get to search my library for an, aura uh, for an aura card and get it in my hand. So basically we have, we do run some one-ofs down there and uh, this really makes it flexible to be able to just get whatever you need and have basically a functional four copies or three copies of each in a way. So, and you know, it allows you to get anything else you need. You need to gain some life. Um, you need to, you have a bunch of enchantments. You need to get an armor to, to really make things crazy or a mask. Uh, or you need some mana fixing, like if you really need the red mana for what we'll talk about later, uh, then you can search for one of these mana fixing auras and uh, get out there as well. So it's a really, really important part of the deck and two copies have been working out pretty good. So those are all the creatures. Um, now we move on to the enchantments. And uh, like I said, starting off we have the these uh, eight enchantments, four abundant growth, and four utopia sprawl. These are extremely important for the deck because they give us mana fixing. So abundant growth um, enchants a land and allows it to tap for any color. It also draws us a card, which is really, which is a really good benefit because I mean the, the card would be so much worse if it didn't draw you a card. So that's just kind of the icing on the cake. On the cake. Then we have utopia sprawl, which is a uh, similar in that. You enchant a forest, and whenever you tap the forest that's enchanted, you get the green mana from the forest plus any other additional color that you choose. 
So I usually choose white so I can have uh, mana for ethereal armor, armadillo cloak, stuff like that. Uh, I'll also choose red a good amount of the time for cards that we'll go over. But basically the whole thing about Popper is that the mana is not very good uh, because you can't play any good lands, any good dual lands like shock lands, fetch lands, um, fast lands, any, any, any uh, dual land that's gonna come into play untapped is gonna be rare, pretty much. There's really not not any exceptions that I'm aware of, uh, or have some other bizarre, some other strange drawback, like you have to bounce a land back, like with the like with the bounce lands. So the consequence is you can't, it's very difficult to play a more faster, aggressive deck like this one and have it be more than one color. Um, but in this case, we're running green, which has always been good with mana fixing in certain ways, and so these, Eight cards are basically the reason why the deck even exists and um, the deck would be if not significantly worse it would be basically unplayable without these cards especially with the banning of uh, Arkham's Astrolabe and stuff like that uh, and also their enchantments and their auras so they uh, really help out a lot with all of the various synergies in the deck as well and like I said you can search them up with the pilgrim if you need to and uh, yeah, they're an uh, extremely important part of the deck. So now we get to the real meat of the deck, which is the uh, the enchantments that are going to pump up our creatures. We have, of course, Ethereal Armor, arguably the greatest aura, one of the greatest auras ever printed. And um, so you, it's one white mana. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control and has first strike. So not only is it going to pump it up a crazy amount with all the enchantments we have, uh, it's also going to make it basically unkillable in combat, which is one of the only ways that they, people can really try and deal with hexproof creatures. So Ethereal Armor is absolutely essential, and if, like, uh, if this card didn't exist, there would be a much, much uh, less incentive to even try to play white in this deck at all. So Ethereal Armor is amazing. Then we have Rancor, we have three Rancor, another great card. Very efficient, it gets plus two, plus oh, and has trample, and you get, it, get to get it back to your hand uh, in case something goes wrong. So it's a really good enchantment, especially up against the Gnarlid, or not up against, but with the Gnarlid, because it'll pump it up, and, it, and the Gnarlid doesn't have hexproof, so if they are able to remove it, you'll just get it back to your hand, you could replay it. So it's a really good card. Um, a three of, because we have other stuff that gives trample, uh, and like I said, we have some other kind of one-of options that we'll go over. We have Armadillo Cloak, which is uh, one of the main win conditions. That it's basically, it's, the ex it's almost the exact same thing as Unflinching Courage. It's actually a little bit better because you can effectively play it as a pacifism on their creature by the way it's worded. But it um, gives a plus two, plus two, and has trample and you gain the life for all the damage uh, it deals. So it has lifelink, essentially. Um, this is essentially a win condition because a plus two plus two is a powerful buff, plus it's it's probably gonna be more with, a, with armors and whatnot out, giving it trample and lifelink so you can punch through all of their creatures and be racing them with life gain. So Armadillo Cloak is another essential card uh, that has white in the deck. So, yeah, it's an amazing, it's a, it's a great card. Then we have Ancestral Mask, um, which is, in the right situations, it's Ethereal Armor on steroids. So it's, uh, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield. So, much like the Gnarlid, in fact, it's better than the Gnarlid, because Gnarlid only counts each aura on the battlefield. This is each enchantment on the battlefield, so... If I'm, I'm going to have all my enchantments, all their enchantments are going to add up, and it's going to give it plus two, plus two for each one, which is just going to be a crazy, ridiculous blowout. Um, overall, it's I would say it's the slightly worse card to Ethereal Armor because it's much more expensive, and it needs other enchantments to be able to give you a benefit. It doesn't count for itself, and it also doesn't give any, any additional abilities like First Strike. But most of the time, it's going to be... Uh, the finisher along with uh, Armadillo Cloak. So Ancestral Mask is a super important card. We end up searching it out with the Pilgrim quite a lot just to just to end the game. And 
we've literally had stuff like um, be be over 20 power, be be like 2020s with uh, uh, this along with all the other enchantments and everything that synergizes together. So ancestral mask another very important piece. Then we have some one ofs here. Let's go over them. Uh, we have life link, which pretty self explanatory. One mana and it gives the creature life link. This is a pretty important card to be able to have. Um, specifically up against other aggro decks, so you can race them with a life gain, especially up against elves, because they have the elf that will gain them a bunch of life each turn. So this is an important card to be able to have, just as an option main board, to give a couple more possibilities, along with the cloak, of being able to gain life. And then we have Cartouche of Strength, which is gives it plus one, plus one trample, so it's kind of a... Uh, uh, a functional rancor in a way it gives it trample and then when there's a battlefield you may have enchanted creature fight target creature and opponent control so it gives us a little bit of removal in the main board and chances are um the creature that we're enchanting is going to be you know it's going to be the one of the hexburg creatures that's already very big and so we're going to be able to take out one of their guys no problem and uh, both of these cards are really good to be able to search up. And uh, this one is no exception because if, if we just really need to remove something, we can just search it up and uh, and take care of things. So these two one-ofs for the enchantment package uh, are really working out well. And then we have a Kami with the Gods and a Fling. So Kami with the Gods, uh, the saw play in graveyard decks uh, around Theros Standard. Uh, it's uh, heavily played in a deck we featured called Abzan. I think it's called Abzan Graveyard. That was just the name. But uh, two mana, reveal the top five cards of your library, and you get a creature and enchantment card into your hand. So basically we need a creature and we need an enchantment for this deck to work, and this gives you the option of taking either one based on what you need. It's only a one of, but chances are if you don't, if you're unlucky enough to not have any creatures or enchantments that you need, you're probably going to end up with this in your hand, so you can just go get it that way. So it's a good one of. And then we have Fling, which is um, the only spell on the main board that runs red. So like we said, we have enchantments that offer up uh, additional color fixing. So the, this is one of the cards that takes advantage of that. We have Fling. as additional cost to it, sacrifice a creature. And Fling deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. So this is just a way to... This is just a game ender. That's that's what it's specifically what it's in here for. Is so we, we're pumping this creature up to a huge amount. But they have a lot of guys on the field that can block. Uh, we haven't been giving it trample. We're, we it, it doesn't have trample. Or we're having some other problem like... Um, it's not the Narlid or the Ledge Walker, so it's gonna be able to be blocked and chump blocked for a while. So this is just a way to, to finish out the game by just flinging it, um, you know, at the opponent directly and dealing the final damage. So this is also working out good as a one of. And then we have the mana base. So we have 16 forests. These are snow covered. Um, no particular reason why. Um, well, I like the look of them. And also, to accommodate, I noticed a lot of, most of these lists were playing the snow-covered lands, uh, largely to account for uh, fringe fringe cases where, I don't know, you, you somehow gain control of some snow artifacts and need these to use them. But yeah, there's, you know, there's no drawback to having them snow-covered, so that's why they're there. So I have 16 of those. Uh, and then we have one snow-covered plains and an ash barrens. The Ash Barrens is really good for the deck because it can either just be it can just be uh, generic mana the turn it comes into play if we need it to if we just need that extra generic for an ancestral mask or something like that um, or you can cycle it for one and then go get a basic land to play and that's why we have the one planes so we can search it up uh, if we get Ash Barrens and we need to cast an armor or something like that so that's the mana base. Um, Despite this is technically a three-color deck, uh, again, thanks to the mana fixing, um, we're still able to play uh, all of the forests that we'll need to cast our early guys the turn on turn one. 
and uh, just enough options to be able to uh, fairly reliably get all the colors that we need. So the main base is working out well. So that's the main board. Now we move on to the sideboard over here. So like the mono white heroic deck, we play standard bearer in the side. And uh, like I said in that video, it's crazy how much stuff it shuts down. And it's a really important card to have, again, in the mirror matchup. Uh, because they're going to be playing it, so we need to get our we should get ours out first. Because whoever gets those out first is going to be at an advantage for the rest of the game, because auras do target. Uh, so it shuts that off, and uh, one of the only ways we can fight that is with um, is with uh, our own standard bearers, and again, good against elves to shut off their their pump. Uh, wh whatever elf they have that pumps their elves up to a billion billion based on the number of elves they have, shuts that off. Um, and uh, there's a lot of interactions it either disrupts or flat out denies. So Standard Bear is an important card. We have one Gut Shot, and a Gut Shot is also good because it will kill a bear on their side because it's the one toughness. And it's also good as a free spell, so we can disrupt what they're doing uh, and still have all the, way, all the mana we need to get ahead. So Gut Shot's, gut shot's a really good card. Then we have Electricery as a three of. Another place where we really you take advantage of the deck's ability to splash. And this is an important card up against, again, decks like Elves and any kind of token decks that are just focusing on swarm strategies uh, to just put out a ton of low power, low cost, uh, one toughness guys to overwhelm you, which is a strategy that is potentially damaging for us because we're only we're mainly focusing on just uh, low amounts of creatures and having those be stronger. Whereas if they have a bunch of tokens, then them just being able to chump block it all the time is going to be hard to get through. So this is a good uh, solution. It's very efficient. Um, it's just two mana and you deal one damage. You ping all their guys, and that's going to give you a huge advantage if it's up against uh, the right deck. You have another life link. So up against aggro decks, uh, just to put in there, uh, usually I'll take out an armadillo cloak in favor of another one of these just so we can get the lifelink and have it cheaper and sooner than, uh, than three mana. So lifelink is an important piece. We have Nature's Claim, which is uh, a, a good card that we have in a green focus deck. We have destroy target artifact or, artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains for life. So this is ve it's very cheap, and it also works in our favor a lot of the time because if we just have uh, a really small enchantment that's not doing much, uh, and we need the life, we can destroy our own and get a good amount of life out of it, or we can destroy anything that they need um, that they're relying on for an interaction and whatnot for a very cheap cost and for life versus this deck if it's doing what it needs to do is not going to be an issue to fight against and then we have relic of progenitus which is my favorite artifact or my favorite graveyard hayden pauper just because of how cheap and efficient it is and it's also rest in pieces are rare but it's also not any effect like that where it'll it'll uh just blindly exile everything because we do rely on it for stuff like rancor but Relic of Progenitus is good because you can keep using it, exile their cards, and exile everything and get you another card. So that's why it's good. Then finally, we have Two Journey to Nowhere. I like playing this card in uh, sideboards of decks with white in it just because it's really good, it's really efficient, and basically it's a two-mana Oblivion Ring, uh, only for creatures, but... Uh, you can get rid of any creature that you're having trouble with. Um, and it's an enchantment, so it works great uh, with all of the enchantment synergies in the main board. So, that is the deck. Um, so yeah, I have this deck along with my heroic deck that I showed off a couple days ago. Both of them were a lot of fun to play. Um, I find, believe it or not, I found that the mono white deck is actually probably the better deck overall just due to the consistency. Um, pa uh, even with these enchantments, you can still have some rough games where you're just not getting the colored man that you need to really apply the pressure. But it's there most of the time. So uh, 
yeah, let me know. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments if you like the deck, if you've played a similar list, what you found is good, what's bad, any changes you think I should make. Really appreciate any feedback. So thanks, guys. See you later.